lesson on the conservation of energy. When we're talking about the conservation of energy, we're really talking about the conservation of mechanical energy. Whereas you recall in class, it's just the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy are those two types of mechanical energy. Kinetic energy depends directly on speed or velocity, and potential energy depends directly on height. Thus, the total energy is the sum of all types of mechanical energy. So the total energy here, E, is the sum of potential and kinetic. And we know that total amount of energy is constant or conserved. Whatever energy I have to begin with, I have to have later on as well. Let's see this in action conceptually. Let's look at the different types of energy a roller coaster has along its journey. Let's say the roller coaster starts here at point A and goes down the track to point B and to C and then ends at point D, as I just showed. Well, what type of energy does the roller coaster have at the top when it's not moving but has a height? Well, in any parts of the ride, it could have potential energy or kinetic energy, or both. So at point A, B, and C, and D, this roller coaster we have to determine whether it has potential energy or kinetic energy or both. Well, at point A, since it has a great height, it has potential energy. And since it's not moving, it has a kinetic energy of zero. Let's say this roller coaster is 500 kilograms and it's at a height of 100 meters. Well, this would give it a potential energy of 500,000 joules and a kinetic energy of zero joules. Hence, its total energy here at point A would be the sum of these, 500,000 plus zero joules or 500,000 joules. That would be the total energy of the roller coaster throughout the ride, no matter where it's at. Let's see how those different types of energy vary along the trip. Now that you see the total energy is the sum of potential and kinetic and equal to 500,000 joules at point A, can you fill in the missing energies at point B? What's the kinetic energy at point B if the potential energy is 50,000 joules? What's the potential energy at point C if the kinetic energy is 200,000 joules? What's the kinetic energy at point D if the potential energy is 125,000 joules? Take a moment and see if you can calculate the missing energies. If you said 450,000 joules for point B, you're correct, because the kinetic and potential energy must always equal 500,000. So if I have 50,000 joules of PE, I must have 450,000 joules of kinetic energy there for a total of 500,000. Let's try point C and D. If you said 300,000 joules of potential for C, then you're correct because 300,000 plus 200,000 equals 500,000 joules, the total amount of energy that has to be constant throughout the ride. And if you said 375,000 joules of Ke at point D, then you'd be correct because when I add that to 125,000 joules, I get my total of 500,000 joules. Remember, the total amount of energy is constant throughout the entire ride. Bouncing a basketball. What is the speed of a basketball when it hits the ground dropped from one meter? Well, here's our basketball here at one meter. If I drop it, what's the velocity or speed of the ball the moment it hits the ground? Apply the law of conservation of energy. The energy the basketball has at the top at one meter has to equal the energy it has at the bottom at zero meters. Here the energy at the top is equal to the energy at the bottom. But what forms of energy does it have at the top and does it have at the bottom? Remember, the total energy is always the sum of mechanical energies, which is kinetic plus potential. Let's write those in. Well, the energy at the top is the sum of the potential energy up there plus the kinetic energy up there. The total energy at the bottom is the sum of the potential energy at the bottom plus kinetic energy at the bottom. But we can quickly eliminate some of these. Otherwise, the basketball is dropped from rest, so it has no kinetic energy at the top. It was dropped from one meter, so it does have PE up there. When it hits the ground, it's at a height of zero, so there's no potential energy there. But it's moving at its top speed, so it still does have kinetic energy. So now we can see that the potential energy at the top of the basketball is going to equal the kinetic energy at the bottom. 
So we can further see that the potential energy is expressed by mass times acceleration of gravity times height, and kinetic energy is one-half the mass times the velocity squared. Well here, we don't even need to know the mass of the basketball because it cancels out on both sides. We do know the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and it's dropped from a height of one meter, and we're looking to figure out what its velocity is or speed is when it hits the ground. So here, we want to solve this relationship for velocity. So 9.8 times 1 is 9.8. Multiply that by 2 and then take the square root. You'll get a velocity of 4.43 meters per second as it hits the ground. Found by the conservation of energy. Roller coaster part 2 for honors physics. As the roller coaster starts at a height of 30 meters, what's the velocity of the coaster at the 10 meter height? Let's assume the mass of the roller coaster is 500 kilograms. Well, how is energy conserved as it goes from the top of the coaster to the bottom of this first hill? We know the initial energy at the top must equal the final energy here at the bottom of the first hill. Let's look at those as sums of kinetic and potential energy at both locations. Well, at the top of the hill, it has potential energy because it's at a height of 30 meters. But it's also not moving, so it has no kinetic energy at the top. When it reaches the bottom of the hill, it has potential energy because it's still at a height of 10 meters, but now it's moving, so it also has kinetic energy. Let's show those calculations for PE and KE at those locations. So here we can see the initial potential energy at the top is converted into mostly kinetic energy at the bottom plus some potential energy left over. So mg times the initial height of 30 meters will equal mg times the final height of 10 meters plus one half mass of the coaster times its velocity squared. This is what we're looking for, the speed of the roller coaster at the 10 meter mark. Take a moment to calculate these potential energies on your own and fill in the equation. Here we can see that PE is 147,000 joules and at the bottom it's 49,000 joules. How much potential energy was converted into kinetic energy? Well here we can just take the difference. So that would be 98,000 joules will equal the kinetic energy at the bottom. If we solve this for the velocity of the roller coaster, we can now see that the final velocity is 19.8 meters per second. Thank you for watching and see you in class.